2021 legislative session is upon us. What can we expect the House to focus on this year? The Minnesota House of Representatives will remain focused on the things that matter the most to Minnesotans, and that is ensuring a high quality education opportunity for every Minnesotan from preschool through job training, affordable and accessible health care, and economic security for working families. And the December special session saw the legislature provide some funding for struggling businesses and also extended unemployment benefits for folks that are hurting due to the pandemic. A federal stimulus bill has been signed, so that's going to help as well. But what policies can we expect from the House to continue helping people and businesses that have been affected by the pandemic? We are all very interested to see in uh, what is in the federal package. Um, this bill came together very late, much of it behind closed doors, uh, 5,000, 6,000 pages, and we were all wondering, was the president going to sign it or not sign it? So there's a lot to unpack in that federal legislation. My understanding is that there are tens of and hundreds of millions of dollars for Minnesotans and to help us with COVID-19, and I'm anxious to see what's in there. And when the latest budget forecast was released, you were the only one of the four leaders that noted the projected $1.3 billion deficit for the upcoming biennium is probably even more than that if you include inflation. So kind of a, a two-part question, should inflation be included on both sides of the ledger when looking ahead? And what does the legislature need to do to address the projected shortfall? We definitely should include the impact of inflation on the budget when we do the state budget forecast. And up until 2002, we did. Um, at that point, uh, Senator um, Moe and Representative Pawlenty agreed to a deal that we would take out on the spending side the concept of inflation. That makes it look like on paper that you have a smaller problem to solve. But we know in actuality, inflation most of the time has an impact on the state budget. And so we should take that into account so that we're fully prepared for our budgeting cycle. Right now, legislators have to take that into account. But yes, if you do take inflation into account, the size of the budget deficit for the next two years is $2.6 billion. And how should it be addressed by the legislature? There are really four key tools that we can look at in resolving a budget deficit, and they are tools that have all been used in recent economic downturns where we see a dip in state collections. Uh, number one, you could see an increase in revenues brought into the state. Number two, you could see some budget shifts. Number three, use of the reserves. And number four, cutting. We don't like to see budget cuts because that means a reduction in services to Minnesotans, usually at a time when they need government services the most. Think about the Minnesota Department of Health and the work that they are doing in the labs to keep track of COVID-19. We need their help now more than ever, so cutting isn't that great of an idea. I think some component of these four tools can help us get out of this. Republican leaders have said tax increases should be off the table, and what, what do you say to that? Well, I'm not a person who, who uh, issues ultimatums or puts lines in the sand, but the countervailing line in the sand for Democrats could be no budget cuts. We have a state government that is efficient, uh, full of hardworking uh, state employees who provide needed services to Minnesotans. And we could say, well, we will absolutely not entertain any cuts. But I think taking a position like that is, first of all, um, unhelpful in coming to a compromise, and two, doesn't really get the conversation growing. The Senate seems to be looking at some in-person activity this year. Um, the House plans to operate remotely all session. Could that change? So the House does intend to begin remotely, but as soon as the CDC and the Minnesota Department of Health tell us that it is safe for us to meet in person, we are really anxious to be back in the building and interacting with each other. I think like all human beings across the country, across the world, we miss each other and we miss the ease of doing things in person that right now we're doing over Zoom and over telephone. And Kind of sticking with that, uh, can you comment on this? Uh, coming up in 2021 here, the House expanding its video capability with a goal of providing live coverage of all committee meetings. Um, how important is that? Well, one of the things that I was really surprised by in the spring was when we had to go remote, 
that we were actually able to increase the availability of our recordings by doing more things online. And so I think that COVID-19 is pushing technology adoption for lots of workplaces, including ours. And it may be that we are going to be able to offer a better service to Minnesotans because COVID-19 has forced us to explore the limits of technology that we didn't look at before. And just two more questions. Like the last two years, the DFL will control the House, Republicans will control the Senate. How confident are you that both chambers will be able to work effectively and uh, finish session on time? Well, usually past performance is a predictor of future performance. And I think when we look at 2019, Senator Paul Gazelka, Governor Tim Walls, and I were able to work well together to get a reasonable budget that served Minnesotans and the budget was done reasonably on time. So my hope is that we would repeat that success with regard to the state budget. We were also able to get some things done that had been languishing, uh, distracted driving, the opioid abuse epidemic, the insulin cost uh, epidemic as well, and then taking care of senior citizens in long-term care facilities and other vulnerable adults in long-term care. So we were able to do a lot of great work together despite the fact that we were divided uh, on a partisan basis. In the last year, in 2020, while there's been a lot more friction, there has still been a ton of productivity. We worked very well together early in the pandemic. And then in July, we passed a police reform and accountability bill that was very difficult, but also very important. In October, we passed a, the largest public works bill in Minnesota history. And then finally, we ended the year in December providing relief to Minnesota businesses and more unemployment insurance to Minnesotans who suffer from long-term unemployment. So although the rhetoric has been dialed up in the campaign year of 2020, and you see more friction between uh, Governor Walls as the leading Democrat and uh, Senator Gazelka as the leading Republican, in the end, we've been able to do a lot of really good things together. And just finally, when all said and done here, uh, May 17th, what will have to have happened for this to be a successful session? We need a two-year budget that serves the needs of the people of Minnesota. And we need for all of the folks at the Capitol to be willing to be flexible on their initial negotiating positions to come to a deal that's the best interest of the state.